Do you ever read the Bible and not understand what you're reading? Well, you're not the only one. Welcome to Life Words Day by Day. Jesus has just told a man in John chapter 3 that he must be born again. To which this man, Nicodemus, says, How can I enter into my mother's belly again? And Nicodemus wasn't the only one with questions when Jesus would speak. In John chapter 4, a woman says, Where can I get this living water that you're talking about so that I won't be thirsty anymore? In John chapter 6, people ask, How can this man give us flesh to eat? So Nicodemus is not completely tracking with Jesus, but he gets one thing right, and that is it's impossible for him to cause the new birth. Just like in physical birth, you do not birth yourself, so too in spiritual birth. It must happen from above. And in response to Nicodemus' question as to how, Jesus gives us the process. Jesus says that we must be born of water and spirit. But what does that mean? Is Jesus talking about two types of births here? Well, this has been interpreted several different ways throughout the years. The two most common ways that you may have heard do include two types of births, and they are the following, that you must be born physically, the water, and spiritually. The problem with this view is that nowhere in Scripture is water associated with physical birth. Yes, there is a breaking of water in physical birth, but that's an interpretation that we've read back into the text. It's mostly, it's, it's likely not what Jesus meant. Or we think that you must be baptized in water and by the Spirit. Some see this as referring to Christian baptism and then baptism by the Spirit. Well, the problem with both of these views is that the language is referring to only one type of baptism, not two different ones. Another problem with what's going on is that Jesus is going to say to Nicodemus, Are you the teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? In other words, aren't you supposed to be the expert in the Old Testament, and you don't understand being born of water and the Spirit? So the question we have to ask is, is there anywhere in the Old Testament that refers or brings up water and Spirit? Well, all throughout the Old Testament, it speaks of being cleansed by fresh water, and the pouring out of the Spirit. But there's one passage in particular that combines both of these ideas that I think Jesus may have in mind, and it's Ezekiel chapter 36, verses 22 through 29. I want to encourage you to go read that passage. So what does all of this mean about the new birth? What is Jesus explaining? To be born of water means that you're spiritually cleansed of your unrighteousness. He washes us. God makes us clean. That's the picture of water for us in the Old Testament. It cleans us. But that's not all, is it? There's not only a cleansing, but there's also a renewing. Old heart is removed and a new heart is put in us. There's a spiritual exchange that takes place. We get a new heart and the Holy Spirit now indwells us. And this is why Titus chapter 3, verse 5 says, He saved us. Not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to His own mercy by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit. Now, here's what I want us to see and understand. Many times when we talk about being born again or saved, we just have the first dimension in mind, that of being cleansed or forgiven. All of our sins are forgiven, their guilt is removed from us, and for that we are thankful and overwhelmed. But if we separate the cleansing from the exchange that takes place, then we create this idea that the Christian is just a person who's been forgiven and that's it. Don't expect anything else from them. But what happens in the new birth is God changes our hearts. Yes, He cleanses us, but He also fills us. He puts His very Spirit in each of us and He begins to change who we are, change our desires so that our lives are going to look differently. They're going to look like Jesus. And so you, do you see how the true gospel, the work of the new birth, has been hijacked? And this may explain some of your own frustrations in your life, doesn't it? Perhaps when you were regenerated, you do remember new desires and a thirst for spiritual things, but all you received was a bunch of rules to follow. And so you tried to follow the rules, but what does the flesh produce? It just produces more flesh. You were never taught about the Spirit of God being active in your life and how to be sensitive to the Spirit's work in your life. You were just told to clean up, show up, do this, do that. And that doesn't really help anything. But I want you to know that you have been given, believer, the Spirit of God 
that is going to create new affections and desires in your heart. As you pray today, please remember Ashraf Sarah and his family are missionaries in Texas. And also remember the Armenian Life Word broadcast heard throughout Armenia. Thank you.